find the argument of negative 2 square root of 3 minus 2i and write in polar form. Before we do this problem, let's briefly discuss what the argument of a complex number is. Let's suppose we have a complex number and it's down here, so z. Now there's many ways to get to this complex number. In other words, there's many angles we can use to get here. One such angle is this one. On the other hand, we can go the other way and we can get to the same complex number by going this way with the purple line. So what is an argument? Well, the argument is the angle. In this case, theta is going to be called the principal value of the argument. The reason we call it the principal value is because it resides in what we call the principal branch. So that's the interval negative pi to pi. So this is called the principal branch. You might say, why do you keep calling it principal? Well, suppose that we have the same complex number, but instead of using theta to get to that complex number, we use this angle here, which I'll call gamma. So in this case, gamma is an angle, and it takes us to this complex number. But gamma no longer resides in the principal branch. Gamma resides in, say, the interval 0 to pi. So this is another branch. Right? It's not the principal one. So for the purposes of our discussion, the value of theta is going to be called the principal value of the argument, and it'll be denoted by capital argz. And it's defined to be the angle that lives in this interval. Okay, so it's a specific value of theta that lives in what we call the principal branch. This here would be another branch, and this would be the principal branch. Let's go ahead and work it out, and when we finish, we'll, we'll go over it again, so hopefully it makes some sense. Okay, so we're asked to find the argument and write in polar form. So the first thing we do is compute the modulus. So that's the square root of, and what you do is you square the real part, and you square the imaginary part, and then you take the square root. So squaring the real part, so negative 2 square root of 3, squared plus, and then we square the imaginary part. This is equal to, let's see, we have the square root. When you square the negative 2, you're going to get 4. And when you square the square root of 3, you get 3. And the square root of, or rather, negative 2 squared is 4. So this is 12 plus 4, so it's 16. So we end up with a modulus of 4. Then the way I like to do this is I actually just set the complex number equal to its polar form. So it's r parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta. And now we know that r is 4 because we found it. r is the modulus. So this is 4 parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta. So if we divide everything by 4, we end up with negative 2 square root of 3 divided by 4 minus 2i over 4 equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. And this can simplify to negative square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, two complex numbers are equal if and only if their real and imaginary parts are equal. So this equation implies that the cosine of theta is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. So now if we draw a picture on the side, we can try to visualize where this complex number is. Keeping in mind that on the unit circle, the cosine is the x-coordinate and sine is the y-coordinate, it looks like we're going to be in the quadrant with both, where both x and y are negative. So we're going to be somewhere down over here. So there's our complex number. It's a rough sketch. So we want the angle that lives in the principal branch. So we need theta that resides in the interval negative pi to pi, because that's the branch we've chosen, right? We're not using some other branch. So that means the angle has to look like this. So we're going to have a negative angle, and it has to give us this. So using trig, it looks like the angle should be negative 5 pi over 6, just 
memorizing the unit circle or just being really familiar with these values. So this is the principal value of the argument of the complex number, which was negative 2 square root of 3 minus 2i. So that's capital ARGZ. Right? So that's the argument of the complex number, or the principal value of the argument, rather. Okay, now that we have the principal value of the argument, we can go ahead and write down the complex number in polar form. So negative 2 square root of 3 minus 2i, we said that's r, and we decided that r was 4. And then cosine of our angle, so negative 5 pi over 6, plus i sine of 5 pi over 6. And we can write this using uh, shorthand notation. So this is 4 cosine i sine, cis, of negative 5 pi over 6. So cosine i sine, cis, is just this piece here. So that's the polar form, and that is the, this is here, is the principal value of the argument. If you like, we can actually write down the set. So arg z, so in this case, arg of negative 2 square root of 3 minus 2i. This is the set of all of the possible angles that lead to this complex number. Again, it's the set of all of the possible angles that lead to this complex number. So it's going to be the principal value of the argument, so negative 5 pi over 6, plus any multiple of 2 pi. So we can write that as 2k pi, such that k is an integer. Boom, there it is. So that's the set, right, arg z. And this is just a particular value from that set. This is the value of theta chosen that lives in this interval, right? So we call this the principal branch. And we call this the principal value of the argument. So I hope that makes sense.